Y'all know what time it is. You know what time it is. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Everybody, we are on the second day of this weekend's telethon operation spread two. Got a big one, big one, massive one for you today. Are you ready for it? Can you handle it? Because it's going to get deep. So y'all go ahead. Y'all know what to do. Y'all know what to do. Hit that like button. You want to hit the share button, all that good stuff. Y'all get the word out there. I'm getting a set up right now. Drop your name, where you're coming in from. Uh, drop your city, your state. Tell the world you love Yahuwah. So while I'm getting this all set up, I'm going to be doing some shout outs here in a second. I want y'all to know how much I love, how much I appreciate y'all. And I can't wait to be able to share this with you today. I cannot wait whatsoever to be able to share this with you all today. We are live here. Ah, uh, y'all sure y'all ready for this? Y'all see that title up there? Do y'all see that title? The Real Matit Yahoo, chapter five. The Real Matthew, chapter five. Oh, I have it from the true scriptures. I don't think y'all heard me break down very much when Yahusha HaMashiach himself is talking when he walked on the earth. So today in this session, and we got 48 verses to get through, 48, where I'm breaking it down piece by piece from the true scriptures. Y'all already know. Got me some, hey, what am I drinking today? I got some fresh squeeze orange juice. I'm sitting there, I go up to the store, and back over in this one section of the store, they're sitting there putting these oranges in the machine, and the juice is just coming down. And then they got a little bottler. And this is going straight over into the bottle. And then the lady goes in and hits the machine, gets the price tag, slaps it on. I said, give me two of those bottles. <laughs> Man, I love fresh juice. Don't y'all like the fr I like fresh. I like things that are real. I like organic. I hate fake. So I don't like no GMOs. I don't like anything dealing with faith. I, I want as organic as possible. Do y'all feel me with that? All right, so it's good to have my brothers and sisters on here. Are y'all sharing this out to your other brothers and sisters in Yahuwah? Are y'all making sure they know what's going on? Let me make sure I'm dialed in here. All right. Going to do some shout outs. Let me get all my pages lined up, man. I got to be I got Before we go in, we got to make sure we got everything lined up. What most of y'all don't know is we're simulcasting on multiple platforms. We're going live on YouTube. We're going live on Facebook, and then we take content, and then we go and we spread it out on all kind of other different channels. So uh, bear with us as we always get things set up. So give me like about five. All right. We look like we're ready to go. Let me do some shout outs here before I go in on these scriptures. All right. Who we got? Michelle, Nicholas, Netherlands, coming in from the Netherlands. It's funny because what was what was Netherlands called before? Netherlands got switched over to the Netherlands, but I think before it was called Holland, wasn't it? It was called Holland. Jamie Galloway. Jamie been getting tore up all this good work. Jamie keeps dropping, man. He's on the same page here. South Carolina in the building. Daniel Libby, one of our strongest supporters. Daniel, Daniel. I think Daniel, I'm almost positive. Daniel, let's do a, let's do a check. We got to stop. Brother Daniel might be platinum right now. Let me just make sure we do a, a check on Brother Daniel Libby, one of our faithful ones, somebody that you can see. You can just watch people. We're not talking about just financial stuff, fam. We're talking about the people that have a heart for the kingdom of Yahuwah. They do Yahuwah stuff. They just do it. Daniel Libby. Oh, Daniel. Oh, this is looking good for you, Daniel. It's looking good, Daniel. Hold on. When did Daniel first contribute? Yes. Hold on, Daniel. You way past platinum. Goodness gracious. Daniel said he's trying to line diamond up at this pace. Come on. Y'all send a shout out to Brother Daniel Libby. Platinum. Emily Aguilar coming in. Where you from? Veracruz, Mexico. Yeah, Zalapa. Oh, man, it's great to see you. Sophia, 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 one of our strongest supporters coming in from Mississippi. Yamani from Raleigh, North Carolina. YBH, you got to start dropping your name. I'm always saying YBH. No, that is, that's it. My bad. Clifton in the building. Now I see it. Clifton, I love you, man. Appreciate you. Thank you so much for being Clifton, Chicago, Chi-Town, the Windy City. 
Nicholas Turpin coming in from Trinidad. Good to see you, Nicholas. Tiffany Hinton, consistent powerhouse for the kingdom. Jackson, Mississippi. Randall. Randy coming in from Florida. Lisa Austin, powerhouse, consistent. Maryland. Michael Fickett, powerhouse, consistent. Platinum member. Coming in from Maryland. Cumberland, Maryland. I love it. I love it. I love it. Elmer, Kareem. Hinko, man, Elmer and Kareem got a testimony for y'all. I don't know, you know, I think some of this stuff is private, but when you see their contribution and what they did and how they kept a vow on Yahoo, it's just really, we're going to decide. Well, I've been deciding whether we release that out, Elmer and, and Kareem. Y'all have to, right here, if y'all get permission, we'll share what you wrote, Elmer and Kareem, uh, Kareem on your last contribution to the True Scriptures Project. Jermaine Ford. Jermaine, knock, knock, knock it on the door. About to hit platinum. I don't know if you hit it or not, Jermaine. Did you hit it yet? I know you're right there. Duran Moore. Duran, you, let me see. Is Duran, Duran you, right there at platinum? Duran is knocking on platinum's door. I don't know if you knocked it out or not, but we got people that have progressed their way up. And if people don't know what I'm talking about, if you're brand new, go to tsnt.org. This is a telethon. We're raising funds. For the kingdom of Yahuwah, we specifically want to spread this message throughout the entire world. We have identified. See, Promote the Truth already identified. It. Then we came and seen if we were going to touch and agree with each other as the body of believers. Do we believe that the word has been altered, that what they've been preaching to us, what we've been hearing about, all of us that came to Yahuwah, we knew something wasn't right. But then all of a sudden we sized up that there's no correct English translation in the world that's in print. Think about that. 20 million copies of the quote Bible going out every year. The word Bible is pagan. Man, think about that word. That word in Biblio, it's a Greek pagan word. Holy is a pagan word. There's nowhere in the scriptures does it say the word Bible or the word holy. People say, well, if it doesn't say holy, what is it? What's the equivalent of holy? You got esteem, esteem, highly esteemed, set apart, right? Set apart is another word for holy. Those are the correct translations. You never see the word holy in translation. All right, Jermaine in the building. Faustina, I think that's Duran's wife. In the building, our sister Faustina Moore, Yamani, yeah, I said that, pa Pamela, Pamela Linus, coming in from Northern, I, Pamela, I didn't know you were from Northern Ireland. That just hits my heart when I see Northern Ireland coming in here. That's how we, look, it's Europe. Michelle confirmed that the Netherlands used to be called Holland forever. Nima coming in from Tanzania, Africa. Look where we're at. All over the place. Ebony. Come on. We got Ebony Joe coming in from Colorado. Come on. Who else we got? I'm going to go in, y'all. Robert Aronson from Portugal. Living in Portugal via Holland or the Netherlands. That's where he's originally from. Look, Elmer said, go on and share it. All right, I'm going to share it. Elmer. All right. All right, so Jermaine is $30, about $30 some dollars from hitting platinum. 23 years old, family. 23 years old. He on here going. Look at this. Duran says, I will become platinum today. We're going to make that announcement on here, Duran. Duran, you ought to join me. Hey, listen, I don't know if we can guarantee it. Any of y'all interested in coming on the live today, send a quick email, info at promotethetruth.com. If you have interest and you want to bring some heat with me, you got a great testimony you'd like to share, just send an email right now to info at promotethetruth.com. I can't guarantee if we get you in because I'm going to go in deep, but the staff will check it out. They'll send me a message on the back channel, and then we'll try to squeeze one or two more people in here. Ashley Mills, where you coming in from, Sister Ashley? Randy, moon. Randy said, let's take it to the moon. Ben Thomas in the building. 
Ben, Ben, is Ben already platinum too? Your money? Look at this. I'm saying people getting them platinum. Y'all go to TSNT.org because I keep saying this person, that person is about to go platinum. That means $2,500 in contributions. You now have all the way to April the 15th. April the 15th. And when I say April, I'm identifying that that's a pagan name too. <laughs> but we're at, so everybody knows, 415 2024 we had it at 331 at Pagan Month, March 31st was the cutoff. We had a lot of requests to get extension of time because people, especially when they found out, we're going to be in Lago Kalima for the uh, Sakut happening in September this year. If you hit gold, which is at least $1,000 in contributions to the TSNT project, you get all these benefits. You get one of the first people starting at bronze, which is $300 in support. You're the one. You're, you're going to be one of the first people in the world that has an exclusive. Nobody but the bronze and above are going to have these particular type style of professionally stamped. These will be collectors' items for a fact. These are collectors' items that are going to be getting sent out because they're going to be professionally stamped. They're limited edition. They won't go out to anybody other than bronze pack holders and above. The rest of the world, when the true scriptures comes out, they're going to have the content in them, but they're not going to have that professionally stamped limited edition that people will brag on forever. And when the campaign's completely over with, you're going to see people go, how do I get one of those limited editions? Say, hey, you can't. You, you, you weren't here when part of the campaign or you heard us and you didn't take action. So let's get it. Where you coming in from, Nicholas Turpin? Nicholas Turpin. Y'all got to say where y'all coming in from. My dad's in the building. Come on. <laughs> Truth can only be found at PTT. My dad is convinced. Y'all got to understand. He's like old school. Tell it like it is. And by the way, Pops just turned 77. Dad, you got to embrace that. That's a lot of wisdom. Don't feel bad about that, Daddy. It's a lot of wisdom. Y'all better listen to Pops. He, he smells something wasn't wrong. His daddy, my granddaddy, his granddaddy, my great-granddaddy were both deacons in the Baptist church. And then my dad, I think, dad, did, did you get ordained as a deacon too? Dad, put if you got ordained. I know you were about to be or you did get ordained. And then shortly thereafter, you split out of the Baptist church. <laughs> my dad, Jed, he said, this ain't right. Shout out to everybody who leaves pagan Christianity behind. Shout out to all of you who had enough courage and guts to leave pagan Christianity in the dust. Ashley's coming in from Belmont, Mississippi. Look at all those S's in Mississippi's and all those I's. <laughs> one, two, three, four I's and four S's in one letter. In one word, you got four I's and you got four S's with two P's. You only got one thing different in that entire name of Mississippi, the letter M. That's it. After the letter M, everything else is the same letters. That's amazing. Come on, Celeste. Coming in from Timoni, Maryland. You know I'm going to teach, Emily. Luya. Tell them what Luya means. Do you know what Luya means? <clears throat> Lewis Cotton, coming in from Melbourne, Florida, likes to go by Luya. Tell him what you believe Luya means. Got Yah in there, so we know the Yahoo part. What's that Lou mean? See if you know what that means in your name. Devin, coming in from Gainesville, Florida. Devin, I went to college in Ocala, Central Florida Junior College. If you go down there, Devin, and you go over to the baseball field, Devin, I don't know if you know this. If you go down to Ocala, which is about 30 minutes from Gainesville, just south of Gainesville, and you drive over to the junior college there, Central Florida Junior College, and you go look out on the baseball field, you'll see Nolan and the number five. They retired my number there. It's on the fence. <clears throat> I think it's only been like two, two, three numbers retired in the history of that college. They retired my number there. You'll see number five, Nolan there. Yeah, we going in. Who else is in the building? I'm just checking with y'all. Then I'm going in. All right, I think we caught up. Wayne Lewis, 
coming in from Louisiana. Those that are called by my name. Yeah, hallelujah. Celeste, what you doing? I see you, Celeste. Catherine, you should come on live with me or something. Catherine's been one like one of them silent powerhouse supporters. Catherine Tillman. Y'all send a shout out to our sister Catherine because Catherine's just been stealth. She ain't playing, y'all. I promise y'all, Catherine is not playing at all. Catherine, you almost platinum, girl. <clears throat> That's another one. <clears throat> Catherine, <clears throat> y'all, excuse me. Catherine, you know you're knocking on the door of platinum? Are you aware? Are you aware you're knocking on the door, sis? Yeah. Catherine's first contribution was 1229, December the 29th, 2023. She's almost at $2,500. She's just been peaked. That's what I love about the con. See, instead of us going, unless you start with the pack, you can't get there. No, nah, we're saying you can accumulate. You can build your way there. Annette Green, Annette thinks she's slick. One of our strong supporters there. Annette thinks she's slick. Annette just said, I'm going, I'm another, that's another stealth. Went platinum. Yeah, Annette's platinum. We can, hey, we're going to get these badges out. I think they're going to start sending them out today. A lot of stuff happening today and tomorrow. Yeah, Catherine's getting there. Daniela Quinones. Where you coming in from, Daniela? Aren't y'all proud of your brothers and sisters, those that believe in the mission this way? Right? Aren't y'all proud of that? I'm proud, man. Man. So listen, we're doing kingdom business today, okay? We're doing kingdom business. That means it's all about the telethon. So I'm going to give you great word. I'm going to teach you. You get ready to get a word like you never heard it before from Matit Yahoo. That's Matthew chapter 5. What does Matit Yahoo mean? Y'all put it in the chat. Who knows what Matit Yahoo? I'm going to put Matthew's real spelling of his name in the chat. I'm putting it in the chat. I'm going to put it in the chat. That way everybody know what to do. All right. We're going to put Matthew's real name and how it's spelled in Abari, Hebrew. I'm going to put it in the chat. Look at that. Yamani's on it. Bam. Yamani's not playing. Y'all look what Yamani put in. The gift is Yahuwah. Is he the gift? Man, Yahuwah is the gift. Is that amazing, y'all? That, that that name is a witness to who Yahuwah is. That's why these names are so critical, because they're witnesses. All right, there you go. Come on, Joe. Adam, where you coming in from? I love Yahuwah. What he said? Look at that. You got your mom. You got your T. You got your top, what you call your towel, and then your towel, and then your yo. And then you got your hey, and then you got your ooh. So you got your ma. So this is a naturally, it's a natural A after that M. Ma. T. All right, that's secondly going from right to left. So you got your mom, then you got your towel. So mom, ma. In the Hebrew letters, mom. All right, ma. The second letter is a tau. <laughs> now, what naturally, what natural vowel sounds coming off of that T? T. There's no letter E's. So what makes an E sound? That's an I. Mut. So you got two T's next to each other. So because it's a natural T. So matit. Matit. Y'all got that? Matit. So those first three letters are giving you a nice flow of matit. And matit in Hebrew means gift. Got it? Jermaine is not a yod, it's a yud. There's no O's in Hebrew. It's a yud. Y-U-D. I had to learn that. Leo, where you coming in from? Leo Alexander, another one of my strong, solid St Leo stealth too. Leo Alexander. Leo is stealth. Leo pushing towards Leo. You pushing towards platinum, kid? Look at Leo. 
Come on, Leo. Leo participated in the in, in the other day. He, everybody on the telethon days, you give it what you give, but we come together to do kingdom business and we go ahead and we contribute that day. So we let Yahuwah know you ain't showing up having your set apart ones. Your messages come out and just be talking in the wind for nothing. You're having us, we're learning to handle business. So Leo did $300 on the first day of the campaign on Friday, Pagan Day Friday. Leo came in with 300 and he's on his way to platinum. I see you, Leo. Hey, y'all root each other on. Look at this. Look at Daniel. Said, Love you, brother Leo. Look at that. Deland, Florida. Man, I used to tear it up over there in Florida, man. You know, I, I, my high school, Leo, was in Spring Hill. You know where Spring Hill's at? Hardly anybody know where it's at. About 35 miles north of Tampa. We need more believers in Canada. Absolutely. Adam, where are you coming in from in Canada? I see it. Fergus, Ontario. I see it. Adam said we in Ontario in the building. I love Ontario. I love Canada. Y'all ready to go in? I done got it set up. Y'all hit, everybody hit the like button. Right? Celeste says I'm at 500. Celeste, you going to get that gold knocked out at least since? Sherry Herrick coming in, Frankfort, Kentucky. Sherry thinks she's slick. Let me see where Sherry. Sherry heading towards Diamond. I know her. Yeah, and did y'all see Brother Daniel Bacote became the second Diamond the other day? Did y'all see that? Huh? Sherry's on her way towards Diamond, y'all. I see her. She's climbing the ranks. Diamond's 10,000 in support. Why they believe that way? You got to ask that. When you see people going with all they got, why they believe like that? Why do people believe like that? Yeah. Emily, don't be trying. I'm going to teach y'all some power words to get rid some power words and some words to avoid at all costs. Stop saying trying. Like you don't want to say it a lot. Mix it in here and there. When you're talking about some higher level spiritual stuff, I'll prove it in a second. But overall, you don't want to say try because you got you got to you got to rock that faith when it comes to things you're doing in Yahuwah. Say I am. That's why he said Aya. I am. Y'all watch the name video where it says to be. Y'all y'all catch that. Whatever you need Yahuwah to be, he will be that. That's why he's the great I am. That's not his name. That's the description of his power. We're going to make these available soon, so let's get ready. Power. Daniel said he's going to Columbia. You come, hey, you come into Columbia, and Daniel, you got to watch it, because the people in Columbia, they go nuts if you don't spell it right. See, you spell it like Columbia, South Carolina. It's Columbia, not Columbia. You know, I just do the same thing. You know, you, you know, you country is all get out when you say Columbia. The country is Columbia. Daniel, you coming to Columbia? Come, Ebony, what you doing? You coming? Ebony said, this is awesome. We will get there too. Hey, I am. Y'all got to think about that. Daniela got it. Daniela, where are you from? King Yonia is, is, is a Latina name. Are you a Latina, Daniela? Colombia. All right. Listen, I'm going to teach you something before we go into the real Matit Yahoo. We're going to be here to 12 o'clock Eastern. Put your seatbelts on. So we're going from around 10 to 12, no later than 12, 15. We're going to rock the house here. But you got to understand when I say watch your words, because Yahuwah says, Aya, Asha, Aya. I am that I am. Now, what does that mean if you slow it down? I am that. You catch that? Yahuwah is telling us, I am that. I love that. Yahuwah is saying, I am that. Whatever you need me to be, I am that. I am. 
Then he confirms it. I am that. Do you need a, a breakthrough? I am that. Do you need more money? I am that. Do you need a healing? I am that. I'm the one. Now y'all put some fire emojis in the chat. And if y'all got the chat lit up, then we'll go in. That's the only way we going in is if you got some fire emojis in the chat. We want to light the chat up with a fire emojis. Do y'all hear me good still? Fire emojis in the chat, and then I'll go in. At least 10 people with the fire emojis in the chat, and I will break down Matthew, Matit, Yahoo, the gift is Yahoo, like you've never, ever heard it before, ever. Look at Lisa Austin. She says, I am going to Columbia. Got the flag up, too. Look at that. We're going to go in. You never heard Matit Yahoo like this. You're going to hear your Savior talk to you. That's what's going to happen. you get ready to hear for the first time. Un-Greek. Ain't no Greek. Not a shred of Greek in this. And this Matit Yahoo chapter 5. Yahoo want me to talk to you about this to clear it up. Come on, Adam, with that super. I see you. 50 Canadian super in the building with my Adam in the building. All right, we're going in. Duran said, I can't find the fire emoji. Somebody get Duran a fire emoji. <laughs> now, Lisa Austin has kicked us off already with a contribution today. She, that's the, everybody go to TSNT, do something. I don't care if it's $3. That's the minimum you can do. Daniel Libby's already made a contribution. Lisa did 52. Daniel did 20. Jamie Galloway did 10 already. Yeah. Mark Finlatter did 104 already. We got people that understand the assignment. Go to tsnt.org and we're going in. So, got big love for y'all. I'm going in. Matit Yahoo, the gift is Yahoo, of chapter five, the real one. When Yahusha saw the crowds growing, he went up on a mountain. When he sat down, his emissaries came close to be by him. Emissaries is his disciples, his apostles, right? The apostles. He began teaching, saying, are y'all ready for this? These are words in the correct manner. Thank you, Sister Tiffany. Love you. These are the correct words that I don't have any Greek in them that were written in Hebrew. This is one of the four books written in Hebrew. Matit Yahu, the tax collector, also fluent in Hebrew in Abari. He wanted to give a gift to the people in their original language, Abari, Hebrew. So he wrote Matthew in Hebrew, okay? And he said, through Yahusha, verse 2, he began teaching, saying, verse 3, blessed are those who seem to have no hope. See, right there, the translation is already ripping. Most people are going to miss it. Because all Greek translations, which don't want you to understand the power of Ayah, of Yahuwah. I am that. See, they're not going to put seen there. Blessed are those, they're going to say in their versions, blessed are those who have no hope. That's a lie from the pit of hell. Everybody's got hope. How are you going to tell people you ain't got no hope? Speak, speak it the right way. Translate it the right way. Blessed are those who seem to have no hope. Because the kingdom of heaven is theirs. You see that? They might seem to have no hope, but they got all of it because the kingdom of heaven is there for them at any time. It's a decision. Verse four, blessed are those that mourn because they shall be comforted. If you're going through a hard time, he's saying, look, consider the blessing you done had a hard time. What Yahushua is saying here is I'm here. I done come down from the on high. 
I've come. The mighty one, the almighty one is here. That's why he's saying to you, all y'all are blessed because I'm here. That's what he's saying. Aya that spoke to Masha on the mountain, Aya is here. Brother James with that super. Thank you, Brother James. Love you, James Harris. So he's saying, because I'm here. Everybody get that? Because I'm here. That's, a, that's, that's incredible if you think that. Make a note on that. Y'all make a note on that. That's important. I'm going to see if that can even be put in the translation if it's going to have that meaning. I'm pretty sure that's going to go right there. I'm going to go back and check that. Because I am here, blessed are those who mourn because they shall be comforted. Verse 5, blessed are those that are humble because they shall inherit the earth. Come on now. Come on now. Look at Luya. Member for three months. Gold member over there. And that's our YouTube support. Verse six. Blessed are those that are hungry and thirsty for righteousness because they will be fed until they are full. Hallelujah. Verse seven. Blessed are those that show mercy because they shall receive mercy. Eight, blessed are those who are pure in heart because they shall see Alua. Woo! Verse nine, blessed are the peacemakers because they shall be called the children of Alua. Come on. Because I am here, he's saying in verse 10. Blessed are those that have been persecuted for righteousness. Y'all got to hear what he's saying. Because the kingdom of heaven is theirs. So you go through hard times, blessed are you. That you've been persecuted for doing what's right. Verse 11. Blessed are those that are insulted. Persecuted. And have all manner of evil things said against them falsely because of me. Woo! Yahush is talking. He said, you bless when you're insulted, persecuted, and have people talking trash about you because of me, because they're saying things that are false. 12, Matit Yahoo, Matthew 5, 12 from the true scriptures. Real translation, first time ever released. You're hearing it live in our telethon. 12, be full of joy and gladness because you have a great reward in heaven. Remember, they persecuted the prophets that came before you. They persecuted the prophets that came before you. Yahushua is reminding us. Verse 13, tell me, everybody bear witness. Write in the chat. Put this is he's talking about me. I'm gonna read verse 13, and you put in the chat, Yahush is talking about me. If you believe this, if this bears witness, bears witness with you. You ready? 13. You are the salt of the earth, are you? But if salt loses its taste, how will it become salty again? So he said, Don't you lose it. You lose it, you ain't getting it back. It becomes good for nothing except to be thrown away and trampled under people's feet. Tell me if you're verse 14. Is he talking about you? Is Yahushua talking about you in verse 14? You are a light. You are the light of the world. You are a city set up set on top of a hill that cannot be hidden. Is Yahushua talking about you? <laughs> I want to know, Dave Messenger. Is Yahushua talking about you? Come on, family. Personalize this today. There's a breakthrough in this message. There's all kind of power in this message. This is Aya. 
Usher Aya talking to you. The same one that said what he said to Masha in that burning bush is now sitting on a mountain saying, because I am here, you are the light of the world. You are a city to set on top of a hill that cannot be hidden. Verse 15. People do not light a lamp and put it under a basket. Instead, they put the lamp on the stand. Yeah, on a stand. They put the lamp on a stand and it shines on everyone that is in the house. Is Yahuwah talking about you? Yahuwah Mashiach? When he was Yahushua right here, is he talking about you? 16. In the same way, let your light shine before everyone so that they, so that they may see your good works and then esteem your father who is in heaven. He wants everybody to see. If he's talking about you, people should see him in you. That light, because he is the light of the world. But he told you, through you, you are the light in the world. Because I'm here. Aya. Asha Aya. It's talking. Come on. 16. It's going to get hot. We ain't even really got hot yet. We got 48 verses. First time ever been put out from the true scriptures. Matthew, Matit Yahu. This is a gift, true? The gift is Yahuwah, chapter five. Come on, Yahuwah. Come on, Yahuwah. So talk to us here. Verse 16. In the same way. And I got verse 16. That's mean, let your light shine so people will esteem the father that's in heaven. Verse 17. You ready for it to get hot? It's getting ready to get hot. Is this talking about you? Yeah. But now he get ready to break it down. He going to set things straight for all eternity. He get ready to crush the Christian thought process here. He get ready to blow up all organized religion. All those that are lawless, that live in sin. Hallelujah with a contribution here on the YouTube with everybody's doing it. Everybody's hitting TSNT.org today. And you got some people that are also going to support it on the YouTube channel too with supers. Here we go. Y'all ready for this? He going to set it straight, Pamela. He going to set it straight, Daniel. Verse 17, chapter 5, Matthew, Mati Yahoo. Do not think that I came to destroy the law. All the prophets, I did not come to destroy them, but to fulfill them. Verse 18, truly I say to you, I don't even know what y'all going to do with this. I don't know what y'all going to do with this. Unless heaven and earth pass away, neither the smallest letter nor the smallest stroke of a pen will be erased from the law until all things are accomplished. Have all things been accomplished? No. Has heaven and earth passed away? No. Woo! What's going on, Mandy? Welcome. Has heaven and earth passed away? No. Has all things been accomplished? No. Therefore, what remains? He going to tell us what he's talking about. He going to tell us exactly what law he's talking about. That's right, Aaron. Hallelujah. In a bari. Pay attention. Verse 19. He going to tell you what law he's talking about. Whoever shall break even one of the least of the commandments and then teaches other people to do the same. Y'all remember, I covered this one once before. Shall be called small from the kingdom of heaven. <gasps> Did y'all hear that? We gonna make everybody put the translations up. We're going to stop on it. Y'all know what we're going to do when it's time to rock. Dang.
Bang! Duran did what? Duran just gifted 50 memberships. <laughs> he just gifted 50 bronze. Duran just gifted about $250 worth of memberships to people. Lisa received it. Yuramani received it. Donna received it. Alisa received it. Ashley received it. Tiffany received it. <laughs> Sue Hay. Divine Scout. Shell Bay. Flea Market. Floppy Disc. Do y'all know what Duran just did? He gifted 50 people a bronze membership for our YouTube channel. It's about $250 he just did. Y'all put a shout out to Duran. 50 Duran, you mean to do that? Jesus Serrano, Eddie, Zinc, Wolf, all of y'all, Duran just hooked y'all up. Duran, did you do that? Look at all those green things coming across the screen. Do y'all see that? Before I go in, y'all know we're going to blow it up on 519 of Matit Yahoo. Y'all know we're going to set the world on fire. Look at all that. You see all y'all's names turning to green and stuff? That means y'all got a free gift from Duran. Duran said yes. He meant 50 memberships. That means he kicked out about $250. Duran doing kingdom business. We building the kingdom. Everybody, I'm going to just, y'all give Duran some love real quick. Because he gifted 50 of y'all memberships inside of our YouTube member area. That's a small support we do to keep a lot of the content and stuff we got pumping over on YouTube. Jared, y'all, there's a bunch of y'all. Y'all never say a thing on here. Y'all on here, y'all getting the word, y'all sitting back listening. But all of a sudden, you accepted that membership and your name popped up. So you can't hide who you are now. Yahuwah, I believe Yahuwah is calling you out to the kingdom. Every one of you who don't say nothing, who listen. And now you see your name in green on that screen over on YouTube. This is all the people on YouTube. That means Yahuwah is calling you to be set apart and to be his witness. And you got to let your light shine. You can't take your light and stick it under a basket or under a table. You got to let your light shine. Hallelujah. I'm going to go in. I just want Duran to know how much we appreciate that. Hallelujah. This is great. Come on. All right, I'm going back in. Mandy. Pamela. Everybody excited. Everybody excited today. We're going all the way up. We're going all the way up with Kingdom Business. Everybody go to tsnt.org. Do something today. Be a supporter. Michael Fickett came in with support today. $50. Sherry Harris came in with $623.36. Come on, Sherry said, I can. My sister Sherry, she trying to mess around and go diamond, y'all. She ain't playing. Sophia, Sophia, $45. Lisa Austin, $52. I see y'all. I see y'all stepping up. All right. Now, all you new people who haven't heard a lot or you people that sit back and quiet and all that kind of good stuff. All right. We're going to teach y'all why TSNT.org is critical. It's mandatory. And there's not one English translation or any other language translation outside of the Aramaic and the Hebrew in its purest form. I got to put a asterisk there. There's not one English translation in the world, whether they've taken the pagan names out or not. There's not one that we've been able to find that's accurate and they teach lawlessness and they teach people Literally how to go to hell because they get them to think that they can just be any way they want and Yahuwah is going to accept them. Yahuwah requires you to be 
in right standing with him. That's what righteous is called. Okay? So I'm going to read from the true scriptures, Matthew chapter 5, verse 19, and then everybody, Yamani, we got to get everybody ready here. Daniel Libby, Michael Fickett, family, everybody get ready. Get any version you want. And when I say it, you're going to put it on the screen and we're going to prove it's a lie from the pit of hell. All right, I'm going to read it. Yahushua's talking in, in Matthew 5, 19. He says, whoever shall break even one of the least of these commandments and teaches other people to do the same shall be called small. Now put up, this is capital, from, from the kingdom of heaven, not in the kingdom of heaven. Is there a big difference between the word from and in? Huh? On every translation you got in the world, more than likely, I'm going to tell you, is going to say the word in the kingdom of heaven. He, he said that if you break even one or teach people to break a commandment, you're not going to be in heaven. You're not going to be in heaven. So how could all these translations put the word in when the word literally in Hebrew translates over to from? You see that? But whoever shall keep the commandments and teach others to do the same, they shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Okay, everybody go put your translation up. Everybody go get whatever version you got. I want you to get Matthew chapter 5 verse 19, copy it, paste it in the chat, and then I want everybody to put what version that is. Where did it come from? So don't just put it in the chat. Put what version. I'm going to prove to you that all these translations are Greeked up. And I'm telling you, they are teaching people lawlessness. Everybody put Matthew chapter 5, any translation in the world. Any translation you want. I'm going to prove it's teaching lawlessness. Come on, James. Hold on. Catherine came in first. She's got a version. Now look, they removed the pagan names. But look, look how they put it. Whoever then breaks one of the least of these commands and teaches men so shall be called least in the reign of the Shaman. That means in heaven. Is anybody going to be in heaven who breaks the commandments? Yes or no? No. Who else? Let's get another one. James Harris. The AMP version. So whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. They're not going to be in heaven. But when you put that, people go, well, you mean I can sin, I can break the commandments, and I'll just be one of the least in the heavens. I mean, look at that nonsense. Your mind has got one up. Whoever then breaks one of the least of these commands and, and teaches men to do the same shall be called least in. That word I in is from the pit of hell, fam. That's how critical translation is. And they're all doing it because they're all influenced by the Greek. They're proving it. Like you're proving that you don't really understand who Yahuwah is. When you put that word in the kingdom, and, and, and attach it to people breaking the commandments. They get to get in. Here goes another version. Let's get the names out. Hold on. Ebony put up. Whoever then breaks one of the least of these commands and teaches men so shall be called least in the reign of the heavens. Look at this. Do y'all understand how pagan that is? Juriel, shit. He got it in there again. He repeated it. It says the word in the reign of heavens, but when somebody's breaking commandments. The Jeremiah study Bible, who Ashley put up, whoever therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches men, so shall be called least in the kingdom. Every one of them 
I'm telling you, y'all see how bold I'm sitting over here? Y'all see how bold I am? And I'm telling y'all, when I went to go translate, I had no idea in the beginning that every single English translation available in the world and every Spanish and Greek and uh, German, every one of them is got these distortions in them. Heather, what version is that from Heather B? Whosoever therefore shall break one of the least of these commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. I'm going to tell y'all where this comes from. I'm going to tell you where it comes from. Y'all know where it comes from? I'm proving it. How many times do I keep proving it? We done done this multiple times. You knew people that are coming in. Why do we got to translate the true scriptures? Why? Because of this mess here. This garbage that I'm showing y'all. That's from the pit of hell. That's a garbage word. And the Savior did not say it. It comes from this trash. The Holy Bible, King James, has influenced all those translations. And they be trying to say, no, we're not. No, we didn't know. We're not influenced. Yes, you are. You are under Revelation, Hazun, Revelation 12, 9. Satan was thrown to the earth. He goes back and deceives the entire world. He leads the entire world astray. I'm proving it. In front of your face. Can you break commandments and get in the kingdom of heaven? Yes or no? This is what's got him, y'all. King James, a pagan man. Pagan to the max. King James was pagan. Holy Bible, two pagan words. And the whole world wonders after it. The whole world is consumed by the beast. The whore, Babylon, TLV version, Cheryl Lynn. Therefore, anyone who sets aside one of the least of these commands that teaches others accordingly will be called least in the kingdom. Ain't nobody getting in the kingdom of heaven. Look at that. What version is that? Okay. The, the NLT version, Amber House. Look at this. Now they're going to try to talk real plain English. Real plain, and they still going to break Yahuwah's word. So Amber House put up, so if you ignore the least commandment and teach others to do the same, you will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. All right, I'm going, all right, I'm going I'm to name a commandment. Can you murder and get in the kingdom of heaven without repenting? Can you? Can you steal? And get in the kingdom of heaven. Can you? What if when he said least means the, the order number? What if the least means starting from number one? Number one, if you teach the least in the order of the commandments. So let's start with number one. I am Yahuwah. Your Lua who brought you out of Matsuri. Matasri, I should say. Matasri, Egypt. Can you have other Elohim in your life? Can you worship multiple mighty ones and get in the kingdom? What if least is in the number, in the order? So number one, can you break that one and get in the kingdom? Number two, can you worship and serve idols and get in the kingdom? That's number two of the least, right? Number three, <clears throat> Can you bring Yahuwah's name to nothing and get in the kingdom? Number four, can you break the Shabbat willingly and knowingly and get in the kingdom? <clears throat> you see what I'm saying? Lou Young got. They call themselves true scriptures. Look at that. Whoever the, is that what they call themselves, Lou Young? True scriptures? Whoever then breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches men, teaches men, so shall be called least in the reign of heavens. And you're not getting, I mean, can y'all believe that trend? Y'all, but now here's the thing. Here's the thing. All right, Daniel Libby's got one up that has the, 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 the pagan names removed out of it. Let's go see what that says. Daniel Libby, it says, 
Whosoever therefore shall break one of the least of these commandments and shall teach men so shall be called least in the kingdom of Yahuwah. I mean, look at that. I'm telling y'all to go get every version you can find. Scrape it. Catherine, talk to me, sis. Over and over, your brother is exposing it. And I'm telling y'all, your mind, you're right, it's trash. Look at that. There's another one. Cliff put it up. YBH Hopkins. Whoever then breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches men so shall be called least in the reign of the Shamim. In the heavens. In. Amber just said it. Woe to the scribes and the Pharisees. So everyone that puts a translation out that is not taking the time to properly translate, I'm just telling you, you should be quiet. You should stop doing it. Because you're teaching, look, you're teaching others to do the same, to break the commandments when you put that in translation. When you put in the word in next to breaking commandments, when you put that in, the word in, I in, in the kingdom, that means you created a translation that are teaching other people to break the commandments. So you then move from in the kingdom to the word from the kingdom. Y'all understand that? You now move from being in. You were translating the you were translating the word of Yahuwah, supposedly, but you didn't take the time to watch what you're translating to see if it would teach other people to break the commandments. Y'all understand this? If you teach other people to break the commandments, the proper translation says you're going to be called small from the kingdom. So those of us that are in the kingdom are going to be looking at you who didn't obey the commandments, even the least of them, even number one. You see what Robert Orenson put? One word can change the whole context. It'll change everything. That's why it's a great responsibility to be given the task of translating Yahuwah's word to the world. Why is this important? Hold on. We got to figure out why this is important. Because people are going, is that really like a big deal? That word in versus from? It's, it's so massive. It's so, it's so massive. It's, it's ma you, you won't get in. It's that big of a deal. You are not getting in. Let me go read you something before I keep going. How we doing on this telethon? Did I tell y'all it's going to be blazing today? This is the first session. We coming back for two at 2 p.m. and 6 p.m. for two-hour sessions. Huh? Now, watch how critical this is. Because if you, if you mess around, you're going to be in that from category. Every one of y'all listening to me, if you don't pay attention to the words I'm saying, you're going to be on the outside of the kingdom because now you know better. Yahuwah, you, you, everybody ain't going in. As a matter of fact, hardly anybody's getting in. It's rare. It's going to be rare for somebody to get into the kingdom. It's going to be rare to get in because wide is the gate that leads to destruction. And almost everybody goes through it. Many go through it. Narrow is the gate that leads to eternal life in the kingdom of heaven. Guess what he said? <clears throat> and few find it. What do you mean find it, Jay? You got to be looking. Well, you, what kind of looking? Yahuwah said, and you're to me, Yahoo, when you search for me with all your heart, then I will be found. Who's teaching that, really? Who's teaching that? Who's teaching what I'm preaching? <laughs> 
I'm going to read you a couple things and why this is critical. Y'all ready? Let me grab it. It's critical what I'm teaching you. And I'm telling you, you tell me who's teaching you this. <clears throat> Annette understands only eight escaped the great flood. Everybody thinks so many people's going in. People literally got in their mind that millions of people are going into the kingdom of heaven. I'm, I'm, I'm very confident in saying this. No, they're not. No, they're not. They're not going in. Not millions. I'm confident in saying that. Per the word, I'm confident. Because he said few. Few. Find it. Y'all going to get me tore up because I'm going to make sure you understand it. You're to me, Yahoo, 2913. And you shall seek for me and you will find me only when, they got to put that in the translation. The word only is there. Only when you search for me with all your heart. Yahuwah is never found just by simply going, hey, Yahuwah, uh, save me, please. You got to understand what the word kahal means. All who kahal call out. With all their heart, kahal is a very set apart word, kahal. See, when, when, when Kappa said, all who call on the name of Yahuwah shall be saved, that call is a kahal. It means you are a called out, set apart one who had enough in you to search for him with all your heart because he said it. Yahuwah don't change. <clears throat> Yahuwah said in Yerim Yahoo 2913, you're going to find me only when you search for me with all your heart. So here's my question, my challenge to everybody listening to the, to the telethon message today. Getting the real Matthew. Is there a difference between this Matthew and what you've been taught? Oh, yeah. You are guilty like I was guilty. We were we gotta we gotta humble ourselves before Yahuwah because we stand guilty before him because all of us read those words over and over and over and over again those of us that are 10 20 30 40 years, hey we've been reading the word for 10 years or more <clears throat> we've been picking up bibles and scriptures and that version and many people said they got five six seven eight ten versions and you've been reading matthew chapter 5 Verse 19, over and over and over and over and over, and it never stopped. You never stopped and said, that's wrong. You never stopped. Like for years, I never stopped. I stood guilty before Yahuwah. <clears throat> Guess when I stopped? Guess when I stopped following dumb things? Guess when I stopped being led astray? When I called on the name of Yahuwah. <clears throat> but I didn't just call. I called on him. I was set apart in him. He immersed me into his name. He burned out all this nonsense and said, don't you accept no more nonsense, boy. May 2007 is when I stopped Duran. And I'm telling you, go back and read Promote the Truth. See the videos I've done over the years. You never, ever, never, ever, 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 never, ever heard me teach that and say the word in the kingdom of heaven, ever, since May 2007. 17 years, I have never said the word in the kingdom of heaven when it comes to breaking the commandments. Ever. I got and read after three plus years of studying the scriptures, six to 10 hours a day, original languages, six to 10 hours a day, included Aramaic, Hebrew, and Greek, six to 10 hours a day. When I came out and I started getting all different types of scriptures all over the place, one after the next. I could not see the word 
in the kingdom of heaven in there. Once Yahuwah saved me. <clears throat> he took the scales off my eyes. Once I was blind, but now I see. That's when you really say. Many people listen to me. You think you saved. You ain't saved yet. Because you keep accepting words that are not from Yahuwah. And you've got unpure words in your spirit. And you keep thinking you're justified. Well, wait a minute. Matik Yahoo, chapter 12, Matthew. Oh, just a few more chapters on. Yahush is still talking. And guess what he says? For by your words, you will be declared righteous and justified. And by your words, you will be declared unrighteous and condemned. My daddy just put it. I've been reading it wrong for 70 years. And many of you are arrogant and pompous and you think, no, he is saving me. No, he's not saving you. You know how many people thought they was getting in when that rain started coming? In Naha's time, Noah's time? There's a bunch of people that were doing good things. They were, they were good neighbors. But good ain't enough. Good ain't enough for Yahuwah. Are y'all getting this? By your words. Okay. So if your words, when it comes to spirituality and religious stuff, if your words, when it comes to eternal life, have been derived from this trash, King James, which is derived from the Texas Receptus, which is derived from the Septuagint and the Latin Vulgate and the majority text that ignore, they, they don't even accept the majority text. I mean, the minority text. They don't accept the, what am I talking about? Hold a minute. Y'all go, we going in. I'm tearing it down, Daniel. Get ready. Hold on. Put your seatbelts on. This is hot. Ain't no way in the world we dealing with any milk right now. Why? Because you're going to end up being in the lake of fire because you think you're right. Cheryl Lynn says, I've gotten it wrong for 75 years. Her and my daddy in the same bucket. I'm telling you, you think you justified in Yahuwah because you just said his name and you said a prayer. But yet you continue to have unrighteous words in your spirit. Yahuwah's called me here today to tell every one of you to repent for the kingdom of Yahuwah is near and at hand. Leave no more doubts. Stop doubting. I can, you can take all the doubt away today. You get in 100% agreement with us. We must touch and agree. They were with one mind. One. Hold on. Mahashim. Acts chapter 2, verse 1. And when the day of the festival of Shabbat, what they call Pentecost, had come, they were all with one mind in one place. We got to all be with one mind in this one place. And here comes the spirit of Yahuwah. Pamela said, I got it wrong 59 years. We got to be in 100% agreement and he will pour his spirit out in this place today. And he will save you. Because 
unless you understand Matthew chapter 5, verse 19 in its correct context, which none of you understood. None of you. And many of you called on the name of Yahuwah and continue to read scriptures and you have let come out of your mouth 519 and you've said in your spirit, you glanced over it, you never went, that's wrong. You said, whoever, what? Whoever shall break even one of the least of the commandments and then teaches other people to do the same shall be called small from the kingdom of heaven. Not in it. And we had one after the next come in here. And, and all the different translations went up and one, every one of them said the word in the kingdom of heaven. So look at the difference there. Whoever shall break one of the least of the commandments and teaches other people to do the same shall be called small in the kingdom of heaven. You're not going in the kingdom of heaven breaking commandments. You're not going in. So once you have been reading stuff like that, and that's one of the 400,000 errors. That's one. That's one of the 400,000. I keep showing y'all, even from cleaned up name versions, that they're still Greek influence and they're improper Greek influence. They are this Greek influence. They are pagan holy Bible, King James, King James, trash, pagan from the pit of hell influence. They didn't, when they went and got the Greek, they wouldn't even accept the original Greek. Hold on. I showed this to y'all one day. You see this? You see that? You see that Greek? That's called unsealed, majuscule Greek. <clears throat> you know what this is? This is the Codex Sinaiticus. That's the Codex Sinaiticus. They didn't want to accept that. This was found at the bottom of Mount Sinai, Sini, where Masha went and talked to Yahuwah. They found this in a monastery, sitting on the back of an old shelf. What I just showed, look, this here, is the oldest complete New Testament, complete New Testament, oldest complete New Testament in original, unsealed, majuscule Greek. The words I'm saying right now, not one in a hundred of y'all understand what I just said. Just give me a little bit of respect and go, this man done done some research. This man done put some time in. Who talks like this? When Yahuwah is in you, you talk like this. Look at this. Guess what? Even in this translation, in this one, this original Greek, it don't say the word in the kingdom of heaven. It says from. <laughs> Hold on. Is that all? That's the Codex Sinaiticus. Okay, look at that. That's the Codex Alexandrius. See that? What is this? Wait a minute. What is that? That's majuscule Greek. You'll notice it's all capital letters, no spaces. There ain't no spaces in here. And it's all capital letters. And guess what? Not one. Not one Christian church who says that it was originally, let's, let's call them out, family. All of these scholars, all of these seminary schools, all these theology schools, they all say that the New Testament was originally written in Greek. Okay, for one inch, for one second, let's give them a little bit of the benefit of the doubt. And we go, okay, okay. You said it was originally written in Greek. Great. Why don't you use the original Greek then? Why do you not use the Codex Alexandrius or the Codex Sinaiticus? Wait a minute. What is the beast power? This is how pompous they are. You see that? That's the Codex Vaticanus. 
Look at this. You see this? The Kodak's Vaticanus. Vaticanus. 1209. The year 1209. Y'all know what Vaticanus means? It's in the Vatican. Right now. They got that original Greek in the Vatican. The big Catholic church, they have that original Greek in the Vatican right now. Amanda, that's where that's at right now. And guess what? Do they use it? No. They hate it. <laughs> they hate it. Every Christian church hates these three books. Every one of them. They're the original Greek language, and they all hate these three versions. They all discredit these versions. They call it the minority text. Minority means it's a smaller collection. They say we only accept the majority text that's written in the newer style Greek. You call it minuscule Greek. Minuscule. It's got uppercase letters, lowercase letters with spaces like you would write in English, right? Spanish. It's got separations, right? Okay. What we're doing, Sister Cheryl, we're going to give them the benefit of the doubt. Everybody that comes at me, comes at Promote the Truth, talks trash about us. I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt and saying, let's just say it was, which it wasn't. Let's just say it was originally written in Greek. Why don't you use the original Greek? Y'all want to know why they don't? <clears throat> I've taught some of y'all this before. Some of y'all new people are sitting there on the edge of your seat going, Jay, tell us why. Because when you get to the name of the Savior in these versions, okay? So when you get to the name of the Savior in the Codex Sinaiticus, the Codex Alexandrius, and the Codex uh, Vaticanus, it says Yahoo Crew. You see what Aaron put in there? It says Yahoo Crew. Every time you get, there's not one time it don't say Yahoo Crew. Not one time. Y'all know what Yahoo Crew means when it comes to the Savior's name? Why do they say Yahoo Crew? Why don't they say Yahoo Sha? Because in Greek, there's no sh sound. There's no shin. Huh? There's no shin sound. So they had to get the closest thing for the Savior because they're trying to do their best to be authentic, right? They're trying to do their best to be authentic. So they put Yahoo crew. Crew in Greek means Christ or anointed one or king. Christ, anointed one or king. So when they got to the Savior's name, it says Yahoo crew. It means Yahoo the Christ in their way, which is a pagan name. Yahoo the king. That's right, James. Yahoo crew. Yahoo the anointed one. Isn't that funny? The, 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 anoint, the anointed one. Are y'all following me so far? <clears throat> Well, why does every single Christian church hate that original Greek version? Y'all come on, get it in the chat. Y'all get it in the chat. Why does the Catholic church who has their version of the Vatican, Vaticanus, Jamie, come on. Why do they hate these? This is all right, y'all. We're going to give y'all the benefit for a second, even though we know it's wrong. Why are you not using the Codex Sinaiticus, which has every book of the New Testament in it. And it's written in the original Greek. Why do you not have it? Because it says Yahoo Crew. That's it. That's the big reason. If you were us, and they all of a sudden in our translations, it's a Yahoo crew. Would you ever say the name Jesus would come out of Yahoo crew? 
Like, how did Jesus come about? How did it even get in the picture? If there's no Jesus, let's go back and do the etymology of Jesus. Iesus. Where did Iesus come from? Oh, it's in those majority texts. So they changed the name Yahoo Crew in the original Greek majuscule, capital letters, no spaces. They changed it over to Iesus. Ea means hell, praise, <clears throat> Zeus. They worship, the, they worship Zeus, family. They worship the sun god. The Catholic Church, everything you see them put up has a sun behind it. They're worshiping Nimrod. Y'all understand what I'm saying? So because they worship like that, they were sitting there trying to figure out what are we going to do with this Yahoo crew? How can we get to where everyone will worship Zeus? Iesus. How are we going to deal with this crew part of Yahoo? What can we replace that with? Constantine and the hundreds of other bishops were saying, we're sitting here looking at these original writings in Hebrew. Huh? And in the Greek translation, they got it as Yahoo crew. How are we going to deal with that crew? How are we going to deal with Yahoo? And how are we going to deal with crew? And they debated for four years, from 321 to 325, on how to deal with Yahoo crew. They were debating it, going back and forth. We don't want anything to do with the Most High. Think about this. It's in the Kodak Sinaiticus, Barbara. If you can buy one, they usually cost about $1,000 or more now. If you, this, is a fact, this is a certified facsimile copy I got. You can't hardly get them. But you can go see it with your own eyes in the British Museum. Over there and hey, my, my family over there in London, in the British Museum, go down to the British Museum. You're going to see the Kodak, the original Kodak Sinaiticus is on display in the British Museum. Go over to the Vatican and see if they'll let you see the Vaticanus. I don't, think they, I don't know if they'll let you see it. Okay, so they debated from 321 to 325 how to deal with the words Yahoo and crew. This is a fact. And they came up with, we want to worship Zeus, but we still got to figure out what to do with the crew. So they came up with, we're going to also worship Krishna. Christ, crew, Christ. Y'all with me? Are y'all learning? Are y'all learning? So they switched out Yahoo with, with Zeus. And then they, they flipped it around. And they went EA. Seuss. And when you flip that around, Zeus, EA, or Zeus crew, you got Jesus Christ. <laughs> Ashley got it. Look. That dictionary of Christian law is sick. You go read that book, you're gonna be you're gonna say, man, they've been going. So I wanted to break that down to you in this session. This is so massive. We got 48 verses in Matit Yahoo to get through. I'm not gonna read them all in this first session. This is gonna require two sessions at least. I'm like, I don't know how deep it's gonna be. But this first session. I'm trying to get past verse 19 because every one of you have been reading scriptures over and over and over, and you've been accepting Matthew 5, 19 in its paganistic from the pit of hell form, and you must repent today. You got to repent because Satan got you. He tricked you, and he had me too. 
until May, pagan month May, right? We don't give it no homage. We tell it it's a pagan name. May 2007, Yahuwah said, come out of her, my people. Come out of who? Come out of that whore. Come out of that Babylon. Come out of that nonsense. I'm going to take all that blindness away. And when you read my word, you now go understand it. And anything that contradicts itself, you're going to pick it up. So I started understanding and reading and verifying from the Aramaic and the Hebrew. And every time you've heard me teach over the years, I've been trying. I did not know this when I first found Yahuwah in 2007. I didn't know that there was no accurate form of the scriptures available on earth. I thought any time it's going to show up. I thought for years. I did the best I could. I bought all these same books y'all got. And I kept saying, all right, maybe this one, they got it right. And then I go over to the, to the Aramaic or the, or the, the Hebrew. <laughs> and I'll be like, y'all just go back and look at my videos from four or five years ago on YouTube. Y'all going to be like, Jay, he keeps, y'all hear me talking. I'm reading through these versions y'all got. And I go, it don't say that. It says, this is the correct way it says it. Y'all hear me say it over and over and over again. I said it like a gazillion times in all the videos. I go, no, no, that's not the correct translation. You always hear me go, I'm reading this from a cleaner version, but that's not the correct translation. And then if you watch all the videos, I got stacks of all these others. I got King James, New King James, Amplified, NIV. I'm going back and forth proving stuff to people because Yahuwah gave me the pure language. But I'm telling y'all, I, I never realized he was going to say, Go translate my word and take. don't have to keep translating the translation. Stop correcting stuff you're reading when you can just go take the time and write it down. And there's no way on earth I thought that I would be tasked with that. Would you ever have imagined that you'd wake up and Yahuwah would say, go translate my word in the purest form in the world? Can you imagine if Yahuwah said that in your spirit, it became so obvious? Can y'all imagine that? <laughs> Daniela, go look at Matthew chapter 5, verse 19. And I'm guaranteed you're gonna see a pagan, you're gonna see paganism there in those versions. And I don't want to talk trash about it. I'm not trying to talk trash because I got appreciation and love. I believe with everything in my heart, everybody that was removing the names and, and lot, several y'all listening to me because people are telling y'all Jay's over there calling this stuff out. So I'm telling you, I'm not throwing trash on you. I want you to correct your translation though and stop teaching people to be lawless. Go correct it. it ain't no big thing. Just do another edition and correct it. Y'all can follow along with me as I put it out. And if I was all y'all, I would support the Truth Scriptures Project. And then a lot of people know y'all's versions. And I would just clean up the mess. And we can all get the word out there even further, working together. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm of that spirit. I just don't know how many people are going to put their pride aside. You know? That's it. I don't know how many people are going to Press down their pride and go, all right. So in the meantime, I'm not going to sit here and tiptoe around the fact that Matthew chapter 5, verse 19, in every single version that you're going to read on earth that's in English, Spanish, German, Dutch, Yugoslavian, Serbian, Chinese, Mandarin, every version... He's got that, I got that verse and many other verses that lead to hell wrong. They got it wrong. Because it teaches what Yahusha did not say. And he says, if you add to my word, I'll add to you the plagues. If you change it, I'm going to blot your name out. And then he just said, if you teach others that it's okay to break my commandments and then tell them that they're going to be in the kingdom, no, you're going to be outside the kingdom. Sylvia, dead on. Humble to have the truth. 
So what are we doing here today? Like how, people, oh, y'all probably want to know. We're about halfway to what we set for a goal. We said we're not even going to put a dollar amount on it because we set it in We set it in our minds. Y'all, here's what we like to be able to do. And we like to work it in faith. We don't need to put no goal number. We don't need, we, well, I can just tell you we're about halfway there. So if you go to TSNT.org and everybody pulls together today and they go, man, this is the most important project in, 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 since the world has been from the time Yahusha came, was killed, and then he resurrected. This is the next biggest event in the world because his word, he says, go forth into all the nation Preaching the good news, the Bashura. How can you preach the good news without telling people the truth? How can the word, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with the Lua, and the word was a Lua. Yahusha is the word. He then died. He took back his name, his word of Yahuwah. Yahuwah, his word, is what divides and cuts through joints and bones and even divides your spirit. That's why everyone here is feeling so convicted today because you finally are getting the real word of Yahuwah. You're still getting it. No, you now you're getting it, I should say. You are now getting the word of Yahuwah that's piercing your heart. It's demanding that you repent, humble yourself. And then we go on to Mahashim, Acts 2.1. And today we are coming together in one mind going, yep. We were, I told you, your brother told you, May, May 1st, 2007, I was deceived. I think I found Yahuwah around somewhere between the 10th and the 13th of May. That means the first week I was still deceived. And then Yahweh showed me, my, showed me himself. I called on him, really called. Not no fake call. I really got immersed into his name. And then he showed me everything. He says, I will teach you all things about me. Nobody will be able to fool you. Do not think about what you will be saying at that time for I'll give you the words. I don't know what I'm going to talk about. Hardly any when I get on there, I don't hardly know what I'm going to talk about. I just start talking and Yahuwah starts coming through me. And y'all can feel it. Y'all know what I'm saying is true. Everybody listen to me right now going, yep. All right. I might read a verse or two. I'm going to leave. I'm going to read one more verse of this one. Verse 20. Because then he warns us after he says, but whoever shall keep the commandments and teach others to do the same, that's what I'm doing. That's what we're doing together. They shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So we shall be called great. Are you with me? Are y'all in agreement with me that we're going to teach others to keep the commandments? We're going to keep them and we're going to teach others to keep the commandments. Are y'all with me? Because if y'all with me and we're in one accord on this, we will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Matthew chapter 5, verse 19. Look at that. If he repents, that's a good one. Daniela, somebody was paying attention. I like that. If he repents, shall be called to the servant's place in the kingdom. It ain't going to be, see that? You see where it says the kingdom of Yahushua? Terrible translation. Terrible. There's no Yahushua 
That's the savior in the kingdom of heaven. Do y'all know that? There's no savior. Robert, what do you mean what's happening? Be clear. There's no savior called Yahusha in the kingdom of heaven. Break your news. Say it one more time. There is no savior of the world, the most, there's none at all in the kingdom of heaven called Yahushua. Y'all got that? None. The only beings, there's going to be several called Yahushua in the, I say several, few, in the kingdom of heaven, when you say Yahushua, in the kingdom of heaven, the man that you know is Joshua that came after Masha, after Moses, he going to stick his hand up. Go, hey, what, what you need? You got that? He goes, hey. He goes, hey, what you need? There's a few others because Yahushua is a common name. The word Yahushua is a common name. And it is a description of who Yahuwah is. Yahuwah is salvation. But there is no savior in the kingdom of heaven now to set in as the right hand, not by the right hand, but is setting as the right hand of Yahuwah. There is no king, there's no one called Yahusha that's the savior. Yahusha, that name, y'all listen to what I'm gonna say? The name Yahushua cannot save you, and it will not save you. Now, who's teaching that? The scriptures teaches that there's only one name given by whom we must be saved through. Y'all got that? There's only one name in all of the scriptures that's given and that only one name is what? It didn't say there's two names. So all these posts I see going all over the place of people that are coming out of Christianity, they still are greeked up. <laughs> it calls him Yahoo. Yahoo. I don't know what you said. I don't know how you pronounce that, sis. That's, that, that, I'm just, y'all got to come to that grips. Now, here's the one accord time again. Do we all believe what I'm saying? That there's only one name, not two. Now, if you ask people that are coming out of Christianity that find Yahuwah that are coming out of organized religion that find Yahuwah if you ask them what is the name that you're saved in almost every one of them are going to tell you Yahusha they're going to tell you Yahusha you know what they're going to read from a translation that says that they removed the pagan names that then calls the name of the Savior. It calls the actual name of the Savior. They say Yahusha. Because in their King James Version, which influenced them to create their version, which they deny saying it did not influence them. And I'm going to say, yes, it did. And then I see some of them admit in their prefaces that they wrote their New Testaments based off of the Greek text. So if you base it off the Greek text, you're done. You're going to miss the Savior. You are going to miss the Savior. You're going to think you got it right. You're going to come all that far out of Christianity 
out of organized religion, and then you're going to call on the name of Yahusha for salvation. And Satan won. Even when you thought you came out, Satan beat you. Because you literally are ignoring common sense of when Kappa walked out of the upper room. Now, Yahusha, when he was on the earth, that's what his name was because he had to be called that, otherwise they would kill him because it was considered blasphemy to call out and say the name Yahuwah and it was a triple or quadruple blasphemy to say you are Yahuwah. That's right, Catherine. Yahusha is a sentence. So, <laughs> Pamela, is this on fire? Think about that. So what I'm telling y'all is this. You cannot call on the name of Yahusha and receive salvation. Because Yahusha, when he was on the earth, he said about Kappa. Kappa, who is, they call Peter. He said, on this rock, which is what, what, is what Kappa's name means. You think it's an accident that Yahushua, when he was walking down and he saw these two fishermen, one of them was Kappa. You think it's any accident that's the first one he called? You ever thought about that? Right? Like you think it's any accident that his name is Kappa and his name means the rock is Yahuwah? And then all of a sudden, Kappa goes through what he goes through, goes through learning. But Yahushua, when he was here, he says, on this rock, Kappa, I'm going to build my assembly, the Kahal. So everybody in the world from that point on is going to come off the influence of Kappa. Hardly anybody gives that it's just due. Yahushua says, I'm going to build it off of Kappa. So he knows, Yahushua, when he's walking on the earth, he knows they're going to kill him. He knows he's going to resurrect. He knows he's going back on high. And he knows he's going to take his name back. Read Yahuhan in chapter 17. Before he left, he told us how it's going to work. He says it. Yahuhan in 17. Read verse 11, 17, 11. And I am in the, I am, he's praying, he's about to leave. Yahushua says, and I am no longer going to be in the world, but these, those emissaries, those apostles are going to be in the world. And I am coming to you, set apart father, guard them, in your name, which is the name you gave me, so that they might be one as we are. Are y'all y'all understanding that? What's difficult to understand about that sentence? Sentences. What's so hard to understand about John chapter 17, Yahuhanan, the gift of Yahuwah? Yahuhanan, John 17, 11 and 12. What's so hard to understand about what the Savior's real name is before he came to the world and after he departed the world? Is that like real hard to understand? Okay, I'm going to read it slow. I'm going to read it very calm. And I want us to come together and see if we're going to agree. See if we're going to be in one mind so that the spirit of Yahuwah will pour out on us today. Okay? I'm going to read it. John 17, 11. Yahuhanan 17, 11. I am no longer going to be in the world, but these are going to be in the world. And I come to you, set apart father, guard them in your name, 
which is the name you have given me, so that they might be one as we are. Verse 12, when I was with them in the world, when I was with them in the world, I was guarding them in your name, which is the name you given me, you gave me. He said it twice. And I watched over them. And not one of them perished except the son of destruction so that the scriptures might be fulfilled. Okay, I'm gonna ask you a question as I read this very slow. I'm gonna reread verse 11. And let's see if we're gonna come together and agree together, okay? And I am no longer, no longer going to be in the world, but these are gonna be in the world. And I come to you, set apart father, guard them in your name, okay? What's the name of the father? Put it in the chat. We're going to stop right there. So we got to, first of all, we got to identify because Yahushua said, as he's talking, father, I've guarded them all the protection. Nothing can touch them because I was guarding them in your name. Would y'all please put in the chat, what is the name of the father he's talking about here? Y'all see it going through the chat? I keep seeing one name, Yahuwah. What is the name of the father? His exact name? Don't add to it. Don't take away. Just spell it the way it would be pronounced the best you can. What is the name of the father? I just keep seeing Yahuwah come up on the screen. I just keep every, the only thing I keep seeing is Yahuwah. And there's no W's, Daniela, in Hebrew. It's just a U-A, W, U-A. So you're just supposed to elongate that U. That's it. But it's got the same pronunciation, so I'm with you. <clears throat> but there literally is no W in Hebrew. And it's it's a dangerous pit of hell tactic to have a W around the Hebrew words. It's from the pit of hell, as a matter of fact. So anybody that uses a W in Hebrew... You got to understand, you you dancing with fire. I'll prove it. That's where they come up with, that's how they sneak Yahweh in to take away from Yahuwah's name. Okay? All right, the only name I see in the chat is Yahuwah. Then I asked what the name of the father was, and it looks like we're in 100% agreement. There is more than, two, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44. I see at least 44 people. We got about 100 people here on both between both channels. And now we got about 45 now. There's another one. 46. 47, listen, it looks like everybody's in agreement that the father's name is Yahuwah, okay? Now, we're going, to go, we're going to move through the verse and make a decision. If all of us are in the agreement, Yavira says Yahuwah, Celeste says Yahuwah, Adriana says Yahuwah, Frankie says Yahuwah, Joe says Yahuwah, okay. If we're all in agreement <clears throat> that his name is Yahuwah, I'm going to read it slow again. Verse 11, John 17, 11, and I am no longer going to be in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to you, set apart father, guard them in your name. We all agree that his name is Yahuwah. And then he says this, which is the name you have given me so that they might be one as we are one. So if Yahushua said at that time, Father, I'm leaving the world, but I want you, and I was guarding them in your name while I was here. Now I'm coming to you, and I just said that your name, I was guarding them in your name, and we agree his name is Yahuwah, but then he says, which is the name you gave me, what's the name of the Savior? Put it in the chat. If the Savior said that the Father's name is his name, and in verse 12, he says it again, 
when I was with them in the world, I was guarding them in your name, which is the name you've given me. So what is the Savior's real name if he said that he was guarding them in the name of the Father and that the Father gave him his name? So what's the Savior's name? What's the Savior's name? Look in the chat. Tell me what the Savior's name is if he says, Father, I was guarding him in your name, and the Father's name is Yahuwah. And then right after he says that, he says, which is the name you gave me? Look at the name. I keep seeing Yahuwah again. So now, one person after the next is using common sense. This ain't no hard thing. This ain't like no uh, trigonometry. He said, Father, your name, Yahuwah, I was guarding him in that name. And that's the name you gave me. He's telling us, I'm going to depart the world. And when I depart the world, keep guarding them like I was guarding them in the world. Now, did he say I was guarding them in my name, Yahusha, on the earth? Did he say, Father, your name is Yahusha? Is there anybody here saying the Father's name is Yahusha? Huh? Nobody's saying that. Nobody in the world that comes out of Christianity, that comes and learns about Yahuwah, and then learns that the Savior's name was Yahusha. They don't get the was part. That's what I'm, that's what's becoming like glaringly. And, and Yahuwah is telling me, hey, tell them that's the trick of Satan. Because they don't know who I am. Daniel Bacote coming in with some kingdom business <laughs> with that super. Y'all know Daniel. Daniel just went diamond. Over 10,000 in contributions with our brother out of Portugal, Robert Palzik, who went diamond. Daniel went diamond. We got other people. See, look at this. See, when we stop and slow it down and we're not all Greek influenced, then all of a sudden we give Yahuwah his proper due. Y'all understand this? We All of a sudden, when we slow it down, when we come together as a family and, and, and we're sitting in the upper room here, so to speak, and we're just talking through this. Imagine if we were sitting down. We love you, Dan. Imagine if we were sitting down like the emissaries and Yahusha standing there in front of us. And then he's praying. We're watching him pray to the father. And then he says, father. While I was with in the world, I'm, I'm getting ready to come to you, father. He says that. But I want you to guard them in the name. Which is your name that you gave me. Then we begin to understand that. John. Yahoo Hanan. Let's go to 8, 24. Now, the Spirit is just talking to me. Y'all see me like walking through it? It's the Spirit talking to me. Yahuwah, Ruah, the set-apart Spirit is talking to me. He says, take him to Yahuhanan, John, chapter 8, verse 24, and read it to him out of the True Scriptures version. Don't let them get caught up in the Greek and then get thrown in the pit of hell. Don't let my, go warn my people not to follow after the ways of Satan. In Yahu Hanan, chapter 8, verse 24, John 8, 24, Yahushua's talking again while he's on the earth. He goes, therefore, I said to you that you shall surely die in your sins. For unless you 
believe that I am he, you shall die in your sins. Okay, now I gave you a Greek version. Now I'm going to give you the true scriptures. Therefore, I say to you that you shall surely die, you shall surely die in your sins. For unless you believe I am that I am, the living Alua, you shall surely die in your sins. Y'all hear that? That's the real version. That's the Aram that was written in Aramaic. When you get to the Aramaic words, it says ana ana. It don't say one ana. When you get to the Hebrew version of it, it says aya asha aya. In John chapter 8, verse 24. Soon as my name is my name and I'm sitting there talking to you, when Yahushua's talking there, he says, every one of you are going to die in your sins unless you believe that I am that I am. And the Hebrew would be every one of you are going to die in your sins unless you believe Aya Asher Aya. The same thing he said to Masha on the mountain. Wait a minute. <laughs> and this is available as a free download. I'm pretty sure. I think we got, and I broke this down. I got a video. Y'all go into the search engine and put the real Exodus chapter three. In our search engine on YouTube. Just put the real Exodus. Because man, I did a train. We done got tens of thousands of views on that video. People at, at, at like catapulted, promote the truth all over the place. When I went in and y'all see me, I go on screen and I show you all the Greek deceptions. And I show you on Google how is Greek is Greek defied too. I show I show you. There's no hiding. And not one Greek scholar, not one Hebrew scholar, not one Aramaic scholar has reached out to us and says, we, can, we, we disagree with what Brother Jay said there. Not one. So what is Yahusha when he was walking on the earth as Yahusha in John chapter 8, verse 24, what is he saying? John 8, 24 He's saying the exact thing that he said in Shamut Exodus 3.14. He's saying the exact same thing. Watch what he, watch. I'm going to read it. I'm going to read Shamut Exodus chapter 3 verse 14. And Alua said to Masha, Aya, Asha, Aya. I am that I am. And he said, thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am Aya, Asha Aya, I am that I am, has sent me to you. And a little further said, because people don't want to keep going. They want to stop there and go, no, no, no. He said his name is I am. No. He said, Go describe who I am first, then tell him my name. When you say Aya Asha Aya, that means to be, to exist. That means you always been, you always will be. So go tell them that the one who's talking to them has always been. And the one that's talking to them will always be. Make sure they're good on that. That's what Aya Asha Aya means. So when he went to them, the Hebrew words that Masha Moses said to the people was, Aya Asha Aya, sent me to you to tell you, because we know it says, and Alua further said, he continued to talk to Masha. Thus, you are to say to, say to the children of Israel, Yahuwah, your Alua. The allure of your fathers, the allure of Abraham, 
the allure of Yitzhak, Isaac, the allure of Yaakov, Jacob, has sent me to you. And this is my name forever. And this is my remembrance and sign to all generations. Then he says in verse 16, go and you shall gather the elders of Israel together and say to them, Yahuwah, he says it again. He doubles down to be sure you know his name is Yahuwah. Yahuwah, the allure of your fathers, the allure of Abraham and of Yitzhak and of Yaakov appeared to me saying, I have indeed visited you and have seen what is done to you in Matzerim. And then he says in verse 18, and they shall listen to your voice and you shall come and you and the elders of Yisrael shall go to the sovereign, the king of Masriam, the Pharaoh, and you shall say to him, Yahuwah, says it the third time, Allah of the Abarim, the Hebrews, has met with us. And now please let us go three days on a three days journey into the wilderness to sacrifice to Yahuwah, our Allah. Four times. Four times from verse 14 to verse 18. No, from verse 15 to verse 18. Four times Yahuwah says his name is Yahuwah. Four times. And he said, this is my name forever in verse 15. And now... That's who was talking was Yahuwah. Nobody here is going to argue that Yahuwah is talking to Masha. But what you're going to have to come to grips with as we close out this session is that now Yahusha, who is Yahuwah, who's come to the earth, says in John 8, 24, therefore I say to you that you shall surely die in your sins. For unless you believe that Ayah Asha, Aya, or in Aramaic, Ana, Ana, I am that I am. The living Alua, you shall surely die in your sins. And nobody can get there unless you're his sheep. My sheep hear my voice. They know that I am Yahuwah. Says Yahusha on the earth, he just said it. And they killed him because he said it. So all of you that want to argue that Yahusha is not Yahuwah, you want to argue that way? Then you don't know what to do with the fact when I ask you, why did they kill him? Why did they kill him? So when I look you dead in the face and I say, why did they kill Yahusha? You're going to have to tell me just what the high priest said because he claims to be the most high himself. He said the words, Aya, Asha, Aya. And none of y'all are as steady as the Parashim, the Pharisees. Because Yahushua, when he was here, he bragged on them. He said, you should very well Listen to the parashim, for they know Masha and the prophets. Listen to what they say, but don't do what they do, because they don't follow what they say. Yahushua was say, he said, I am that I am. And the high priest ripped his clothes. And he said, no, we don't need no more witnesses. He's claimed to be the most high himself. He said he was Yahuwah in front of all them. And they took a bag and they put it over his head and they beat him. They was punching him in the face. And you want to sit there and say that wasn't Yahuwah? Who says in Yeshua Yahu, chapter 43, verse 11, I, I am Yahuwah. And besides me, there is no savior. When he says in Zechariah, and you shall be seeing me pierced, and you will mourn for me. What are y'all going to do with the fact 
that Yahusha is Yahuwah. And he said, whoever shall break even one of the least of my commandments, of the commandments, that was his commandments. He's the one that created them. He's the one that wrote those commandments with his finger and then teaches other people to do the same, shall be called small from the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall keep the commandments of mine and teach others to do the same, they shall be called great from the kingdom of heaven. We here preaching Yahusha is Yahuwah. And we preach him impaled on a tree, not a cross. And we preach that the most high, the creator of the world, came as a man and died like a man so that he can literally relate to us for all eternity. We preach Yahusha is Yahuwah and he was impaled. Sister Annette in the building with a super. Yeah, Daniel said he was bruised for our transgressions. Who was that? By his stripes, we are healed. You gonna tell me there's two saviors? I'm gonna tell you, you a lie. You gonna tell me that Yahushua is the savior? I'm gonna tell you, you a lie. Yahuwah is the savior and there's only one name given among men. And I'm proud that Yahusha humbled himself and took on a regular man's name called Yahusha to tell who he really was and walked on this earth like us. I'm humble that he did that. But I will not in any shape, form or fashion discredit him from remaining on earth when he's on the most high spot. Daniel Bacote, another super. I will not dishonor my savior who paid the price of becoming a human, who took on a regular human name, Yahusha. Yahuwah is his name. Y'all good? I see y'all back here at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Everybody go to tsnt.org. If you're brand new, we're doing a telethon. We're handling kingdom business. We are raising money to spread this word throughout all the world because the world has been put on notice that there is no true translation of the scriptures that's, that's circulating, not one. If there is somebody, please bring it to the forefront. Somebody bring me one that don't say in the kingdom of heaven when it comes to breaking commandments. And then the other 400,000 errors that we keep proving one after the next. We already done tore them up with Shaul talking about it's okay to eat food sacrificed to idols to break the second commandment. Go look at every version in the world. They're going to say it. Go to tsnt.org. We got a goal to hit today. Everybody just do the best you can. We got to be in one accord. We got to give everything we got to the kingdom. We got to bring our first fruits. What's best for Yahuwah? Just do from your first fruits. And watch out who will bless you. He will open up these doors. I believe he will. I believe him at his word. I'll see y'all back at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Love y'all with all I got. Bye-bye.